Okay then everybody, welcome to the first video in um, <clears throat> in our new 100% walkthrough for Doctor Oz 3. Uh, this is going to be aimed at being a, primarily a Pyromancer into Dark build um, playthrough. Uh, obviously we are still going to be collecting everything much like in the Sorcerer playthrough. Uh, but this one is going to be much more organised um, and should come out kind of much better and easier to follow than the uh, previous walkthrough. Uh, a couple of things I need to say before we get started. Uh, first off, a uh, huge thank you to all you guys that have been supporting me out there. It's been absolutely great. Um, thank you for all the great comments. Um, and, you know, it's been quite humbling for me. Uh, which has been excellent. Uh, and the second one is to Sol Ace uh, on DeviantArt for letting me use his um, Pyromancer picture. Who, obviously, I've tried to uh, do my best to base this character on. Uh, but, unfortunately, I wasn't able to get it all that close. Um, so, with all that said... Uh, let's get this started. So a couple more things uh, that I need to say before we uh, carry on with this. First off, I forgot to say uh, a minute ago, but uh, I will be including a link to Solace's uh, domain on DeviantArt if you want to see any more of his pictures. Uh, and the second one is, um, in my last playthrough, I was asked to play the dialogue and intro scenes, so I will be playing through those as we go through the game. Um, <clears throat> now, in my previous walkthrough, obviously I did cut, uh, cut out... Uh, after I died, the route back to where I died, and I'll be doing that again in this walkthrough. So obviously, you know, I feel it's important that people see me die. Like if I die in a position, it's kind of like you know, I'm, I'm no god at this game, and um, you know, I, I feel like it's cool to kind of display that. So on we go, with the guide, and through this awesome journey we go all over again. Let's get it on. Now, as I said at the beginning of my last walkthrough. Um, if I don't feel like there's anything I need to say, um, then I just won't say it. I'm not going to try and, you know, just cover all of my videos in my voice. <coughs> cool. So, over on the right we have an optional enemy, uh, which we'll be dealing with. So, this is optional. Um, obviously feel free to have a go. You can just run in to um, grab an item that's in here. Is someone chasing me? You can run in here just to, um, you know, if you want to, suicide run and grab the item that's just over there. You'll still keep that if you die, uh, for those that don't know. But we are going to attempt at least to deal with this guy. Oops.
I was I'll send him put him back to there. Cool, so with that done, uh, it turns out he really doesn't like us using the fireball, which is pretty cool. Look at that, which is going to give us some more souls. And onward we go. Obviously do be careful, uh, if like me you're out of uh, Estus flasks after fighting him. Uh, although don't be too worried, because if you die you can just pick them straight back up again, we're not going to have to deal with him again. Um, but just a reminder, uh, he is optional, I mean I did him in my second try, which is not too bad, uh, considering that you know he can essentially one shot you. Onward we go to the next bonfire. Well, to the first bonfire, should I say. Let's go. So, first bonfire reach. these guys. So things important for people to know, uh, in my sorcerer walkthrough, if you want to know how to get through these areas really quickly, um, feel free to watch those, I'm going to go in here, I'm going to go and left back up after that, because that's terrible. Uh, feel free to go and watch that as we do speed through uh, this area and a couple of other areas rather quickly to get to some really good items. But this one's kind of going to be a little bit more aimed at, um, you know, clearing each area as we get to as we get to them and going through them in a little bit more of an organised manner. So do just be aware of that. So you want to run over here and jump off there like that. Grab ourselves a Tanat Shard, first one. Now those are for upgrading your weapons. Uh, the first upgrade takes two Tanat Shards. So we need one more and we can actually make our weapon cause more damage. Okay, so through there is the boss fight. If you've followed me down this way, feel free to go on ahead in there and face him. But first, we are going to clear this bit out. 
Blackhampton. Ooh, someone coming. Now we have got the advantage of being able to throw fireballs. Which as you can see do quite a lot of damage. And it's going to make things nice and well not necessarily simple all the time. But most certainly gives an advantage, especially here in the early of the game. Cool, so we're going to go around here. These guys are going to aggro on us for an ambush. Where are you? There he is, we go down. It's important to try not to get caught out by too much of these. And as you can see, the, uh, the pyromancy flame. Uh, doing its job rather nicely there. Now, something to say about the Pyromancer Pyromancer Flame. Uh, an advantage as um, a Pyromancer in general is that we only have uh, one implement to cast with. And what I mean by that is if you're playing as a Sorcerer or a Faith Build, um, you will have several different um, implements to cast with available to you, which means you may end up uploading a couple of them, uh, but it's nowhere near as confusing for Pyromancer. We only have the Pyromancer Flame, uh, which will as we level it up do quite considerable amounts of damage which is going to be pretty nice for us so with this area cleared we are going to have uh, a quick rest at the bonfire now we haven't taken much damage but uh, we don't have all of our um, focus points now in case you don't know what focus points are when you go into your menu uh, we have couple of resources here. Uh, we've got health points, flux points and stamina. Now these are essentially uh, what you use to defeat things with and HP essentially is what you get defeated by if you if you die. So um, you need focus points to carry on casting fireballs and we are going to want those whilst we are in this boss fight. So back down we go. Kill this off. And I'm taking on this guy. So we are now all prepared and we are going to be taking on Gundir. Now I don't actually know if we're going to be using very much Pyromancy, um, as it's kind of better off if you stay close to him. But we're going to give it a go anyway.
Come, so is that done? Um, obviously, to its namesake, best way to defeat him is actually with the uh, with the pyromancy. Just can't take the time. Dodges attacks when you get an opening. Um, launch some spells at him. So next off, we're going to be heading into Firelink Shrine. Now, uh, this is kind of going to sound a little bit weird, but basically there may be a breakpoint here. If there's not a breakpoint here, uh, we're just going to carry on. But I'm going to check just kind of the time. I don't want the videos to go too far over half an hour this time around. Um, so this could be a goodbye. May not be goodbye. So after See defeating Gundir, uh, we are going to head through the door. Just press A on it, and you'll open up the door. On through we go. Grabbing all these items as we head on through. Obviously, we've got a few enemies to be dealing with. Man's here, then. Alright, let's get you down for you to do anything to us. Got ourselves a homeward bone. Uh, those, you are, those items are pretty useful. Uh, the idea of a homeward bone, I'm going to equip them to my hot spots, as you could say. Now, basically, if I use one of those, that will take me back to my uh, the last bonfire that I rested at, or the filing shrine, which we are going to discover in a moment. And if it on the right. Ouch. That didn't go hard, plan. No mind. So we are just going to clear our way through the Firelink Shrine. Um, now that is kind of like the main hub area in there. That is going to get us um, everything that we are... Well, that is where essentially you do everything. So, careful dogs. These are absolutely annoying. In every sense of the word. Got ourselves an ember. Uh, now, uh, at the end of the Gundir boss fight, you may have seen the ember restored. Um, sign come up. Now what that does is it essentially boosts your HP. So, uh, very useful. It also enables um, the majority of the online um, areas of the game, so if you want to kind of do co-op or PvP or anything like that, embers are useful. Although not necessarily required for all of it. If you want to offer co-op, you do not need to be in ember form for that. Um, so the rest of here. Obviously, as you can see, our souls are nicely building up. We're going to be using those up in a second. And before we do that, we're going to head back out the way we came in. So another useful item for anybody that wants to kind of use any any form of dexterity or anything like that. Uh, this is also going to get us some extra souls. So we're going to do this. And this guy's pretty easy for us to uh, to defeat, uh, as he has a pretty harsh leeching point. Uh, if you don't know what a leeching point is, that means there's a point where he basically won't pass. And that means that we can throw fireballs at him from a relatively safe position. I believe it's quite close to these steps. Yeah, so he is now leashing. And we're basically free to throw fireballs at him. Oh, come on. <laughs> oh, dear. Now he is pretty tough, pretty tough. Whoa. Get back on your leash. There we go. Well dodged. Should have healed for that, was close. There you go, so that's his extra 2,000 souls, a few nice items. Don't think there's any way, anything else up this way for us just yet. There we go now. So we have got the item on the tree, which we'll be picking up. 
this. I think this is another ember. Yeah. Moving on over this way. This is where we were earlier, where the dog was. Cool, so now we are going to head into Firelink Shrine and clear up that area. A couple of things that we want to take care of whilst we're in there. Now, um, even if I forget to do it, um, make sure every time you come into the Firelink Shrine, you fully exhaust everybody's dialogue, as that will uh, that is kind of what progresses uh, the storyline in here. Um, of course, um, I'm going to be allowing the dialogue to play, which may extend the amount of time uh, these episodes last for. So uh, it's up to you whether or not you want to skip ahead of those or not. Ah. Another one, roused from the sleep of death. Well, you're not alone. We unkindled are worthless. Can't even die right. <laughs> Gives me conniptions. And they'd have us seek the lords of Cinder and return them to their molding thrones. But we're talking true legends with the metal to link the fire. Not fit to lick their boots. Don't so, you think? pretty jolly guy there, eh? <laughs> what a mm -hmm. sick joke. Asking us to seek the law. The talking truth. <laughs> so now he's just going to repeat himself. Oh. So that means we've exhausted his dialogue for now. Uh, we've also got fire link, the firekeeper just here, uh, who we are going to be leveling Welcome up with. Welcome to the the law to this end. So, Very well, then pick. probably should let all that play, I'm really sorry. Um, being as we have got a considerably oh, large amount of souls, we're going to make that even bigger. So, in here we've got all of these items here that can get us extra souls. Now you can use them individually, uh, but the quickest way to get your souls is literally by just selling them to this lady. I'm sorry about skipping through these, but these aren't really all that meaningful. So, we are going to sell all these off. Ashen one. So, get that one used. And that's going to get us a strong um, amount of starting souls. Now, souls in this game uh, are basically your currency. You use them to buy items, uh, buy spells, upgrade your weapons, and leveling up. Now, for now, leveling up is definitely something that's quite important to us. Now, whilst we have got... I'll, I'll go through, back through that in a second. I'll go back through the talk in a second, we'll go through the dialogue, but just whilst we are looking at this, and um, we'll show you what we want to do. Now, we already have uh, quite a lot of points into what is probably going to become our main damage stats, okay? So as we raise these, you'll see weapon 2 um, is going up. Now, I don't know whether you can concentrate on 1, 1, 2, 3, 4, it stays at 21, or 1, 2, 3, 4, it stays at 21. So, um, Looking at the way that the stats happen, you have a choice. You can either uh, concentrate on intelligence ooh, to raise your fire uh, damage stat. You can concentrate on faith to increase your fire stat, um, or you can raise them both. Now, whichever way you do that is going to change the affinity that you have with other magic abilities. Okay? Uh, if you raise intelligence, that is going to raise your affinity with. Um, Sorceries. Now, I already have a sorcery walkthrough, so we're not actually going to be bothering with that. Um, Faith is going to increase your affinity with miracles, uh, and I'm going to be doing a no commentary run of uh, a cleric build anyway, so I'm not going to be bothering with that. So we are going to use the Pyromancer's um, advantageous starting stats to actually build a dark build. Now, dark spells are slightly different to other spells, but we'll go through that when we actually get some. Um, so we will raise that slightly, so that will give us a slight bit of extra damage with our fireball. But the main things that we want to concentrate on right now um, are vigor, which would actually like to get to 20. Now with 20 vigor, uh, you are going to feel like an absolute tank by whilst you are coming through these early areas, uh, because you're going to have, like as you can see, almost on double the health. Um, 
but we're going to stop about there uh, because there's not really too much reason to go above that in the early areas of the game. Next, after that, you are going to want uh, some points in endurance. Now, the reason I'm saying to level these up first is because these are our survival stats. Uh, you're going to have a much easier time getting through the early areas with these at a higher level, um, particularly as you're not going to need to cause all that much damage. The other advantage that you have is that we are going to be obviously coming across various weapons and stuff over the early areas, and you won't have invested too much in here yet, meaning that you can then decide, or do some research and then decide which weapon it is that you want to use uh, and then simply meet the requirements of that weapon um, and the reason you only really want to meet the requirements is because uh, because these are going to be our damage stats uh, we are actually going to be infusing our weapon either to raw or it will be going into a element that we have an advantage with so for now concentrate on making yourself more survivable um, and then we will look at increasing damage later. I mean, as you can see with the fireball, we are not struggling for damage anyway. Farewell, Ashen One. May the and as you can see, my health bar is now pretty massive, especially for this early in the game. So, with that done, the next thing on our list is to go up this way. Go up the second set of steps just here. Uh, we're going to do something that I do in every place that I do, since I've discovered this. We are going to run up that tree, hit that roof, and grab that item on there. Now, <laughs> this is accessing an, an area of the game that would usually cost you 20,000 souls. Um, it is a little bit uh, tricky. Now, something that's going to give you an advantage is taking off um, your items, as that is going to give you a greater jump distance. Although you don't need to take this off because it has no weight. Another advantage for the Pyromancer. Um, and so you literally just kind of want to jump across this and then jump over this way. Now, it's going to take me a few tries, uh, so I will cut to the success. So, only actually took me two attempts, which I'm quite happy with. Um, let's see, I'm going to give the axe. Right here. So, the east shield, the east west shield. How opposite do you want to get? East West Shield uh, is giving us slightly more defense than the Caduceus Shield, so we are going to uh, switch to that. And get our gear back on. So, I guess after that, now is a good time to talk about equip load. Now, we've spoken about HP, focus points, and stamina, uh, but equip load is essentially the weight of the items that you are using. Now we have some advantages in the fact that our catalyst uh, has no weight. So when I say catalyst, I mean the thing that we cast our spells with. It have no, has no weight, whereas uh, anybody casting any other kind of spells there's, does have a weight. Now the reason that matters is because as your weight ratio rises, it will affect your ability to roll. So currently at the moment, uh, we are actually fortunate enough to be under 30%, so that means we have the longest um, roll distance. Now, if I were to raise my equip load above that, you'll see that I have a smaller roll distance. Um, and I don't actually have uh, enough stuff to get it to the se over 70%, but if you do, you will then do what is called a fat roll, uh, which is in fact detailed on my Building Your Character video, so feel free to take a look at that. Uh, after that's all been said, we are going to carry on with this. To my homeward bones. Onward over off here, uh, where we are going to have ourselves uh, a little walk across here. Now this um, is another massive, massive advantage to come across early in the game. First off, Esther's Shard. Now, Esther's Shards are going to increase the amount of Esther's Flasks that we have. So, um, you know, it is quite massive to have this so early in the game, as I said. You would normally have to get 20,000 souls to get in here, uh, and by the time that becomes an expendable amount of souls for you, that's quite late in the game. Next off, we're going to hit this wall, which is going to reveal a secret. Now through here, we're going to roll off the end, and in this chest is the Covetous Silver Serpent Ring. I hope I got that the right way around. Yeah, Covetous Silver Serpent Ring. Now what that does is, 
that raises the amount of souls we get from kills. Thereby meaning that as we go through these earlier areas, we are going to be gaining more souls than what we would have been, allowing us to level up a bit. Now the reason this is especially important for this build is that this, this character is probably going to be a little bit higher than my other characters, mainly because uh, of the amount that we are going to need to put into our damage stats um, just to see how far we can push um, fire and dark damage. Um, so that is everything sorted, that is Firelink Shrine um, mainly dealt with, we've got one last person to talk to, uh, well a couple of people to talk to, we will go through the dialogue, but if you're not interested in dialogue feel free to skip over to the next video now uh, and all, that's gonna, all, you, all you'll miss is just me running around getting the dialogue from the characters. So see you then guys. All that unkindled, and a seeker of lords. I am Ludleth of Corland. Look not in bewilderment, as I say. I linked the fire long ago, becoming the Lord of Cinder. If substantiation be thy want, set thine eyes upon my child cause. This sad Cadaver. No need to be coy. Have a closer look. Knowest thou of our purpose? Five thrones will take five lords as kindling for the linking of the fire. The fast fading flame must be licked to preserve this world. A reenactment of the first linking of the fire. So it is. I became a Lord of Cinder. I may be but small, but I will die a Colossus. Knowest thou? Now, now. Ashen. Farewell, me. Ashen One. Produce the coiled sword at the bonfire. The Mark of Ash will guide thee to the land of the Lords. To Lothric, where the homes of the Lords converge. Ashen One, to be unkindled is to be a vessel for souls. Sovereignless souls will become thy strength. I will show thee how. Ashen One, bring ye souls. Plucked from their vessels. Farewell, me. Ah, well met, Ashen One. How may I be of service? Ashen One, if my wares are not to thy satisfaction, bring me umbral ash. With ash, I'll fashion new wares. Is it not our sorry fate to sup on death? <laughs> Ashen One. Well, a newcomer, I see. I am Andre. I serve at this shrine as a humble smith forging weapons. You're in search of the Lords of Cinder, I trust. A toilsome journey, I'd wager. You'll require good arms. Let me smith your weapons. I am a smith. Such is my purpose. Weapons and protection are sturdy enough by and large. But when overused, they'll eventually break. When their durability is low, repair becomes a necessity. Use a powder, or simply rest at a bonfire. But should chance impel them break, bring them me. I'll hammer them back into shape. They take no pleasure in breaking, I assure ye. So handle them with care, if ye would. For thee, be careful. I don't want to see my work squandered. 